very happy to have you here today. Thank you. So it's a great honor, honor that you wanted to speak to us. Thank you so much. <laughs> so uh, me growing up in Iceland, uh, I was a child and a teenager when, when, uh, when you became prime minister of Norway. So it, it's extra exciting for me to, to be talking to you uh, yeah, today. Yeah, and that for me is a great pleasure to meet you. And if I can contribute uh, to some extent in, in fighting especially a stigma around mental health, problems I, I'm glad and I've been to your country several times I have many friends from Iceland uh, both from the, my political life but also from my private life ah, that's great good to hear so uh, if you can tell me a little bit a uh, little bit about yourself so so the story of you when does your story begin like <laughs> you probably had a childhood like like everyone else yeah, and yeah. where did you grow up I, I was born and grew up in a little town called Molde, okay. uh, at the west coast of Norway, northwest. Yeah. And uh, I had a very good uh, framework for growing up there with my parents. Uh, my father was a headmaster of uh, what we in Norway called Folke School. Uh, yeah. and, uh, it's a free school, mm -hmm. uh, not a part of the official school system. So the students there, they were living on uh, on the campus. Yeah. So I uh, grew up uh, being among them, uh, and um, and so I went to upper secondary school myself also in uh, in the town Molde, yeah. and was very much engaged in, in a Christian organization there on on in the school. Okay, but did that start at early age and teenage years? Or? Yeah, I yeah. was uh, 15, 16. Yeah. And so I was also involved in the political youth organization of the mm -hmm. Christian Democratic Party. I see. Uh, when I was around 18, I think. Mm -hmm. and, and so I went to Oslo studying theology and I became also an ordained Lutheran pastor. Wow. And, uh, and when I came to Oslo, I was also engaged in the, the youth organization of, uh, of my party. Yeah. And uh, gradually I came up in, in different positions. I became the leader of the youth organization. I became consequently a member of the board of the party yeah. and the party leader, he wanted to use me as a young politician. So I became his advisor, wow. became state yeah. secretary, as mm -hmm. it's called, when he became prime minister back in 72. I was wow. only 25 years. Yeah. And so I was elected to parliament in 73, only 26 years old. I was the youngest at that time, elected wow. to parliament ever. Yeah. Later, it has been even younger. Okay. <laughs> So um, then I was in parliament for some years. I became the deputy leader of the mm -hmm. party. I became the leader of the party. And finally, in 97, <laughs> I became uh, the prime minister of Norway wow. so, uh, for a coalition government uh, comprised by uh, three parties in the center of the political mm -hmm. spectrum. And did you, when, when you started having this interest in politics, was there some life event with the court or did this interest grew gradually or when you when you look back yeah. was there something which happened which which uh, started all this i grew up in a family that yeah. was interested in politics yeah. my father was engaged in in local mm -hmm. politics yeah. uh, and i had an uncle who was a member of parliament and yeah. became also a minister yeah. uh, of education and church affairs back in 65 i think mm -hmm. And um, so he was at the end of his political career when I started. <laughs> I see. But we were a few years at the, both engaged in national mm -hmm. politics. Mm. So um, this has uh, occupied most of my life uh, since I was uh, young until I stepped down from parliament and government uh, back in 2005. Wow. And then I founded the Oslo Center, yeah. which is the center, uh, been working now for 15 years, mm -hmm. and now concentrating on what we call democracy assistance. Mm. Uh, and that means that we go to countries where democracy is developing, but very uh, vulnerable mm -hmm. and fragile. And um, especially at the eastern part of Africa, we are working with several mm -hmm. projects, uh, working with the democratic institutions. That means, of course, parliaments, governments, political parties. And we are working also especially on projects with, with young people across uh, ethnic borders, which mm -hmm. is a conflict dimension in these countries. Yeah. And we are also young, uh, working with women 
try to encourage uh, them to take more political uh, positions. Hmm. I see. So, so it, it's um, it sounds to me like the interest for society and and uh, having a having a fair society has always been uh, been something which is uh, important. Absolutely, for you. it has been a part of my whole yeah. life. Yeah. Uh, so the politics uh, never changed. The just the just the. Uh, uh, events or, or, or yeah. the uh, departments because, of it uh, changed. Yes, I, yeah. when I was young, I was very also engaged in in foreign policy mm -hmm. um, to fight against uh, the injustice in world, yeah. uh, fighting for the rights of the developing countries, mm -hmm. especially. And I'm still engaged in that yeah. uh, because the Oslo Center, where I'm now uh, the executive chair of the board, mm -hmm. We are, as mentioned, engaged in uh, in the de democracy. How can we de develop and stabilize democracy? Mm. And that is, of course, in uh, in the interest of mm. poor and oppressed people I see. in these countries concerned. Well, what do you think has been like the, the major drive or motivation for you? It's like some people, some people might might think like. Why does such a person engage himself so much in politics and, mm. and society? So, what do you think is you, your major drive? Well, for me, I think it is uh, my Christian faith mm -hmm. and the ethical values that yeah. I base upon, and where the core value is um, human dignity. Mm -hmm. And if we read the UN Declaration on Human Rights back from 1948, you will see that the first paragraph starts with human dignity, even before mentioning the words human rights. Yeah. So for me, human rights is a consequence of human dignity. Mm -hmm. For me as a Christian, it comes out of that I believe that we are created by God mm -hmm. uh, and have consequently that great uh, human dignity. Others will have other arguments and sources for fighting for human dignity. And when you see people are poor and oppressed and people die in wars and, mm -hmm. uh, and so on, that creates an engagement mm -hmm. uh, in me, yeah. fighting for against mm -hmm. such uh, developments and fighting for uh, the human rights and for human dignity. So that is my main source. Yeah. And do you think like, uh, do you think mm -hmm. that you feel uh, you felt and feel the responsibility like that? Is that also part of it that you, that you feel? That, that your belief system is that you feel that you're responsible like to to have oh, yes. an action is that is that something which is guiding you as well yes yeah. it is um, I would say human dignity and and sound stewardship mm -hmm. uh, our responsibility for uh, using the both economic and yeah. uh, natural resources not only to the benefit of our generation but also mm -hmm. future generation and yeah. there comes also a, up, of course, the climate uh, yeah. problems now, yeah. uh, which is very crucial in that regard. And I will say also the, the commandment of love. Mm -hmm. uh, since I'm Christian, Jesus is my main ideal, and uh, he talked about love not only to, towards God, but also towards our common human beings. Mm. So that uh, is another source yeah. of my engagement. Yeah, I see. And and you as a private person, it's like how, how have you combined this engagement uh, this felt responsibility and and your private life, if you if you can share a little bit about that. Yeah. Of course, uh, when I have been so much uh, occupied, so busy during many years, it's not uh, easy to combine it with a sound family life. But mm -hmm. um, uh, by good help of my wife and uh, children, I think we managed to do it. Yeah. Uh, when I came into Parliament back in yeah. in seventy three, we had. Uh, two children and we got number three, uh, three years later. Mm -hmm. Of course, I didn't spend that much time at home as I should when I came up in these leadership positions, yeah. party leader, uh, minister, and later prime minister. But I tried to reserve uh, some time for them, uh, weekends, of course, and, mm. but not only with my family, but also with friends. I was very strict yeah. on that. And I yeah. gave a very clear uh, message to, um, to my secretary in the prime minister's office that uh, this and this evening I'm occupied. Yeah. I don't say with what, but I'm occupied. Yeah. And if people ask, with my family. Yeah. And that's a good reason for yeah. staying away. Yeah. 
and, and the same with some weekends. So yeah. I think we managed to come through a very yeah. busy time. And we are lucky we have uh, three good children and yeah. uh, ten grandchildren. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And do you have good relationship with your children? Oh, yes. Very yeah. good. Yeah. And with the grandchildren okay. as well. And uh, two of these families are living rather close to us yeah. outside Oslo. Mm. We see them rather often. Yeah. And 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 uh, making this uh, dialogue with a partner when one spouse is a little bit more busy or, or more busy related to career. Of course, mm. uh, you can be as as busy uh, as home with family core activities. But but what was was it a long process in negotiating or having a common understanding that 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 uh, they might see less of the husband and the father than they might want to. Yeah, of course, we discussed it. Yeah. And uh, I, I talked with my wife. She was willing to take more of the responsibilities at home. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, when I'm a pensionist in principle, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do more mm-hmm. than I did. And yeah. I said to her that uh, when I leave politics, it's time for you to prioritize yeah. what you do. And to some extent, she has done it. Yeah. And with my children, of course, I explained yeah. to them why I not, was not a, as much as at home as mm-hmm. I wanted to be. Yeah. Uh, I think they more or less understood. Yeah. I, sometimes I took them to the parliament uh, mm. in the restaurant there every Saturday when parliament was not in session, but the restaurant was open. Yeah. We came there and yeah. we had a lunch together there in parliament so they could yeah. see where their father was uh, yeah. working and yeah. so on. So I think that uh, also helped. Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a, a great advice for many people out there doing a similar thing. So mm. you, you at least try to create uh, that, uh, create a, a, a felt of a journey for the family that the mm. children got included uh, and your wife probably felt that she was a part of the journey. Oh, You're yes, doing this was, together. Uh, she had the job for several years. She, yeah. uh, she's a teacher by education, so mm-hmm. she teached in school. <laughs> First years when we were married, and yeah. so when number three, child number three came, she left uh, her job for some years. Mm-hmm. But so she came back working both in the kindergarten and uh, and with um, adults, uh, education for adults. Mm-hmm. But so after some years, uh, when I had been prime minister, it was so many requests for her to travel with me abroad. Mm-hmm. Uh, to make her part of our representation in a way. Mm-hmm. So then she left uh, her job finally. Yeah, yeah, I see. Okay, and do you think looking back uh, that that you had a very good quality of life during those years? Oh yes. Late I, 20s I, and, and, and during the 30s? I will say so, absolutely. Yeah. Despite it was busy, yeah. I had a good quality of life because in addition to try to prioritize my family, mm-hmm. Uh, I very much prioritized to, to keep the relationship to my many good friends. Mm-hmm. Do you, and, do you uh, think that has been a key to maintaining good quality of life? Is that re- this relationship yeah. you, you kept kept intact? Absolutely, yeah. that was a key for uh, quality of life. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were together with friends, uh, both my wife and I together, and other couples. We traveled in summer vacation abroad. Mm-hmm. Uh, after some years, we got our um, summer house or cottage uh, two hours south of Oslo. So mm-hmm. we went there very often in the, the weekends. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, helped to keep quality of life. Mm, I see. And and being a politician is is uh, without a doubt a, a stressful and, and a challenging job. Mm. And and as you describe, your responsibility. And career evolved pretty pretty quickly, mm, mm. so and um, probably the stress and the challenges increased. So, what do you what do you think were your strategies in dealing with that? The strategy was too bad in yeah. the beginning. <laughs> well, in Parliament, uh, it went okay. Yeah. Of course, you have a responsibility as a member of Parliament, but mm-hmm. when you come a minister in in government, yeah. uh, it's much more. Yeah. But I also managed that, uh, yeah. I think, rather Did you felt a, a big shift and change? Oh, yes. Uh, like when From you became a minister? To cabinet, yeah. it was a, a big difference. Yeah. But the biggest difference was from being a minister of cabinet to be the prime minister. Yeah. And as I very often say, you can never know what it is to be a prime minister without having been it. Yeah. And then we are only six persons in Norway who know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't it so, more than that? Well, I, uh, well, because you have... Exactly, yeah. 
first of all, you have yeah. not only the responsibility for one political field as a mm. minister of agriculture, he has yeah. a responsibility of agriculture yeah. <laughs> policy, uh, health minister, uh, responsibility for health policy. Prime minister has the responsibility for all political yeah. fields. Mm -hmm. That's a heavy burden. Uh, the other heavy burden is, of course, that you are responsible 25, 24 hours yeah. per day. Probably uh, feels like 25 hours a day. Yeah, yeah very often. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, seven days a week, yeah. all days <laughs> during yeah. the year. Yeah. So that's a heavy burden on your shoulder. Yeah. So um, that cannot be compared to any other job. No. no. So um, in the beginning, when I was prime minister from 97 to 98, yeah. I did not take the necessary measures to um, keep time mm -hmm. uh, away from the job. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I found all requests very interesting and I would like to be there and there and there. And if I had one hour left, I said yes <laughs> to yeah. another request. Of course, that was not good. Mm. So I got a very hard lesson to learn yeah. uh, during August, September 2000, uh, 1998, after yeah. one year as Prime Minister. Yeah. So I, uh, I really uh, hit the wall mm. with a tremendous force yeah. that fall. But it was not only the job that, uh, that was a reason for that. I had a psychiatrist mm -hmm. who analyzed me from my birth up to up to that time yeah. and he said uh, that uh, the main source for my mental health reaction that I got in 98 was a um, loss of um, three very good friends on my same age mm -hmm. during three years. All yeah. three of them yeah. died because of brain cancer. Mm. I was very busy as a politician, party leader, and, and finally prime minister. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have time, or let me say, I didn't take time mm -hmm. to um, work on on the grief. Yeah. And um, uh, I think uh, that was, in accordance to my psychiatrist, the main reason mm -hmm. why I got this uh, depression. Uh, because he says that uh, that uh, grief that is not managed in a way mm -hmm. uh, will um, take very much energy from mm. you. Uh, so I started to get lack of sleep. Mm. That even more reduced my energy. Mm -hmm. Even rather easy problems were yeah. impossible to solve. Mm. I couldn't concentrate anymore. And uh, I felt that everything was black mm -hmm. and I got a, a strong feeling of anxiety. So all these symptoms came mm -hmm. in the end of August 1998. I will never forget that. We had had a summer vacation. I was rather in good shape physically. I played very much soccer that summer as mm -hmm. I love to do and as that I still do. <laughs> and I will do tonight as well. <laughs> and. Uh, but we came back from the summer vacation. Uh, I felt that something was wrong. Mm -hmm. And the last night I couldn't, I, I lost more and more sleep. Mm -hmm. And the last night I didn't sleep at all, not mm -hmm. a minute. Yeah. So I was, despite I was in rather good physical shape, not able to come out of bed that morning. Mm. It was a Sunday morning. So my wife uh, and Oli said something was wrong. Mm. So she called uh, a very good friend of us uh, and he uh, came immediately from his summer house two hours away mm. and he brought with, me, with him on the way a psychiatrist mm -hmm. that he knew and that he had used very much. <laughs> so they came both and uh, my Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Wallerbeck, uh, called my wife mm -hmm. and asked her, how is it with Selman today? Because I think he had a sense that um, something was wrong the last days in yeah. Denmark. They, they start to pick up the signal that you were changing yes, or something I was happening. Yes, I think he had really uh, seen mm. that. So he uh, and she told uh, him and said that Selman is not able to come out of bed and everything is black for him, that much anxiety. So then he also came. Mm -hmm. uh, so there were three of them. Mm -hmm. 
And he came primarily as a friend, of course. Mm -hmm. And I told him when I was in bed and he was sitting beside me that I now everything is black, so I have decided to step down as prime minister. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, Shalmanga, you must never take such an important decision when you are so much down. Mm -hmm. That was a good advice. Yeah. He managed to convince me that I should not do that. <laughs> and so uh, the psychiatrist uh, and the other friend, they got me out of bed. Mm -hmm. And uh, the psychiatrist take, took me aside in the kitchen and the others were in the living room. And, and I had so much anxiety that I could only sit down for one, two minutes. And then mm -hmm. I had to stand up and go mm -hmm. around the table and uh, so try to sit down again. <laughs> Uh, I will never forget that. And after some time, he gave me the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. He said, this is a depressive reaction. Mm -hmm. I had heard about depression, but never depressive reaction. Mm -hmm. So I asked him, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> and he told me, it, it is uh, a diagnosis in our manuals. And that means that something uh, uh, in or outside you has created a depressive reaction mm. and that you are down to zero, mm. which I really was. Yeah. So um, uh, that was a very special moment. And I remember that um, we had to discuss what to do. I was prime minister. And the next day we should have a very important meeting in the cabinet where we should uh, uh, finally approved uh, the state budget for next year mm -hmm. and uh, it was always interest from journalists from the media around these meetings and so everybody will see that the prime minister is not there mm -hmm. because i was not able to be there and to concentrate on the budget so we had to make a press release mm. and we discussed during the evening what shall be written in this release and some said the uh, prime minister is ill and cannot uh, work and will be ill for one week or two weeks. But I, I saw a light in my dark tunnel uh, for one moment. So I said, why not say it as it is? Why not say it as it is that I have a mm. depressive reaction? Because I was thinking yeah. if I didn't say the diagnosis, there will be speculations. Mm. Has the prime minister got cancer or yeah. a heart attack or what is it? Yeah. And we, we should avoid that. Yeah. And the other and more important thing was that I wanted to contribute to break down the stigma mm. around mental health problems. Yeah. Because that is, was and to some extent still is Today. the main problem with regard to, mm. uh, to mental health problem, yeah. stigma. So we made a press release saying that <laughs> I was uh, ill uh, because of a depressive reaction. Mm. And that was released next morning. Oh. Uh, during the evening, I went to my office to meet uh, the inner circle of the cabinet because mm. we had already um, made an appointment to meet the day before the budget discussion in the cabinet mm -hmm. to, to, to try to agree on some main lines. Yeah. And I met there, but I, the deputy prime minister took beside and said that I'm sorry I cannot be in the cabinet tomorrow mm -hmm. so you have to lead mm -hmm. the meeting and maybe you also should lead, lead this meeting now uh, uh, this evening to prepare for the cabinet meeting and she accepted <sighs> on anger and I went home mm -hmm. next morning we released uh, the press release and uh, it was breaking news mm -hmm. in media in Norway yeah. So uh, in radio, in TV, mm. they had the breaking news uh, and uh, covered this. And I saw my colleagues in the cover in the cabinet and especially the party leader sitting there yeah. telling the press that I was not able to be there. Mm -hmm. Many questions and so on. So that uh, <laughs> I remember the day, the 21st of August, because that is my mm. wife's birthday. Ah, so it's easy to remember. Yeah, I see. <laughs> well, but maybe but it was not a good birthday gift. No, no. <laughs> I, 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 I understand that. But it may come as a surprise to you. But, but, uh, but I, I still remember that day. I was a teenager back okay. then uh, when I read it in the news. 
uh, yeah. that uh, in Iceland. That, that okay, okay. So it was even in the news in Iceland. It was even in the news in Iceland. I still remember that day uh, because it was breaking in a way that yeah. that I have felt uh, uh, like I felt as you and and people who have had mental health problems in their family. I felt like th- this was this was something which has never happened before mm. like no no state leader has come out and be truthful and and i, I still remember that that uh, that uh, when that came out in iceland and and uh, i was a little bit shocked but i also was <laughs> very, I, I admired it very much okay so because uh, because as i as i see it and, and thought about it as you explain now is that is that it could have been much easier to not tell the truth. Oh yes, and probably there were people who were advising you to say something different and, and not yes. telling the truth. But it's yeah, admirable well, the, that you did. The, the group around me that yeah. uh, night uh, mm. on the Sunday before yeah. we released uh, the press release on Monday, yeah. they were in doubt, uh, yeah. of course, uh, because uh, to be that uh, open and <laughs> frank mm-hmm. is that uh, uh, wise. <laughs> but I said yes, I will do it. Yeah. Uh, so I made the decision, and um, you wanted I, to be truthful and tell it as yeah, it is, yeah. and avoid mm. speculations yeah. uh, on on what illness I had. Mm-hmm. And today I'm even more convinced uh, yeah. than before that this was a right decision, mm. because exactly what you are mentioning now, many people reacted very positively in Norway. Mm. During next four weeks, when yeah. I was out of job. I got around thousand letters, wow. and thousand is rather much in a small country like Norway. Yeah, and most of them said we have similar um, mental health problems, mm. and that you were open on this yeah. has helped us mm. to talk with somebody, mm. because that is a very important message from uh, for uh, for me, mm. namely that if you have mental health problems, mm. smaller or bigger, yeah. very many have. Mm. <laughs> We we know that today. The first step to be imp- uh, to uh, to uh, be better mm-hmm. is to talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. Maybe you should not start with a psychiatrist, but uh, with a friend. A psychologist even better. No. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> you? Yeah, you can talk with. Them. But you can talk with a friend you trust, yeah. and who will keep the secret if you want that. Mm. You can talk with a family member, maybe that you trust, whom you trust. Yeah. Uh, so start to talk because mm. then you open will up, lift. Yeah. Uh, will mm. you will open up, yeah. and you will lift a little bit of the burden mm. on uh, your shoulders. Yeah. So that is so important. Yeah. Start by talking with somebody mm. that uh, whom you trust, yeah. and so you can go further mm. to a, a, a psychologist or a, a psychiatrist or. Yeah. Uh, and so on, and get necessary help. And I did. Mm. I did. The psych- psychiatrist, whom mm. I mentioned, uh, who yeah. was there that uh, Sunday night, he, yeah. he he was very good and helped me very much. Mm. And uh, we had to leave my home because it was so noisy around. Mm. Uh, first of all, there were many media there who wanted to, if they could get a good glimpse of the prime minister. <laughs> yeah. uh, but they were also working on a new house beside our house, so it mm-hmm. was very noisy. So we went up in the mountains. Yeah. To his um, psychiatrist's uh, cottage up mm-hmm. there. Yeah. My wife was with me, fortunately, and then we started what I call uh, uh, walking and talking therapy. Okay. <laughs> because he said yeah. one important thing is yeah. to come out in the fresh air mm. and to exercise, to yeah. walk. Yeah. So we started to do that, and the first day, despite I was, as I mentioned, in rather good physical shape, I was mm-hmm. only able to walk 50 meters, yeah. and so I had to sit down. Next day, maybe 100 meters, Mm -hmm. 200 meters, and so on, uh, more and more. Talking therapy, we also had. That means that he talked to me two, three times during the day. Mm -hmm. He went back to my childhood, to my youth, what had happened in my family. Are there any others in your family who had um, mental health problems? Mm -hmm. And I told him, yes, my mother had. Mm -hmm. Uh, Did did she also have a depression? Yeah, well, she never talked about it, and no. my father never talked about it. But today, yeah. I uh, realized that I think it was that. Mm. And we have, I have some relatives also in my family who have experienced this. Mm-hmm. So he said, yes, to some extent, this can be genetic. Mm. But genetic is not enough alone. Mm. It must be something above, yeah. and that can altogether mm-hmm. make a depressive reaction. Yeah. 
So uh, he said, first of all, loss of good friends mm. and grief that was not uh, managed. Yeah. Uh, did you and, think that you made... And, and of course, also my hard work and that I did not take necessary means to save time uh, to brief. Mm. <laughs> uh, not being in, in activities and job all the time, I should not have been that. Yeah. So these things together, yeah. he, he, his opinion was that these things together mm -hmm. was uh, the reason why I got this uh, yeah. reaction. But we were up in the mountains. I thought I was naive and thought that after one week I will be back yeah. in good shape. Of course not. Of course not. But the, the, the strange thing was that during the evening and nights I felt rather well. Yeah. But so next morning I was down again. Yeah. <laughs> so next evening even a little bit better, but next mm -hmm. morning down again. Yeah. So it was two steps forward, one step back. Two That's steps it. forward, one step back. Mm -hmm. But of course that means that there will be a netto forward <laughs> yeah. after some time. But of course, after one week, we had to make a new press release that mm. the prime minister will be out of job also for the next week. Mm -hmm. So we made that three times, yeah. I think. Was that a hard decision? Uh, did you, it was a hard you, decision. You probably wanted, I, I, wanted, I, I, wanted I the speed recovery. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I acknowledged myself yeah. that I was not good enough to come mm. back. Yeah. But I also acknowledged that I should be back uh, before four weeks because then the session of the parliament started again, mm -hmm. as it always do, in the 1st of October. Yeah. And we should present um, the state budget. Mm -hmm. And that would be having very difficult without the prime minister present. Yeah. So after three weeks, the psychiatrist said, I feel that you are now that good that we can make a new release that you will be back in job within four days. Mm -hmm. It took a risk, I think. Mm -hmm. But we made it. Wow. <laughs> and uh, after uh, three and a half weeks, yeah, consequently, I was back in job. I, I went into job secretly one day before yeah. the, the journalist. Just to test me, a little bit. To, to uh, test how easy yeah. to see yeah. me in my office again, yeah. how easy to meet my uh, staff, mm -hmm. uh, my colleagues. Yeah. I found that it was okay. I will manage it. Mm -hmm. So the next day that was announced, I was back. Mm. We had more than 50 requests of giving interviews mm. both um, by national and international media yeah. and my press advisor said we what do you think no i said i cannot sit down for 50 interviews it would take too much time mm. so i will make a press conference i said <laughs> will, oh will you <laughs> will you sit on the podium before <laughs> all these journalists <laughs> uh, you have recently recovered <laughs> yes i said i do that mm -hmm. so we can make comments to all of them and cannot take 50 interviews. So we did. Yeah. That was, of course, also a risk. But I will never forget that press conference. It went rather well. I told my story. I was mm -hmm. open with them. Yeah. And, and did you, in that press release, did you talk about the friends which you lost? Or did you yes. go into that as well? Not uh, into detail, yeah. but, no. uh, and, uh, but uh, I told what was, uh, were the main reasons uh, mm -hmm. for my depressive reaction. It was very much respected by the journalists. It yeah. was uh, also breaking news at this time. And uh, But the, the, the coverage uh, in both in Norwegian and international media uh, was good. Mm. Uh, dominated by respect, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. And also the colleagues received me very warmly in the cabinet and in mm -hmm. the parliament as well when yeah. I came down there. And most comments uh, when I was out of job were also rather positive. It was two exceptions, but I will forget that. Mm. <laughs> After some time, they changed their comments. Yeah. Uh, so you forgave them? Huh? So you forgave the people who... Yeah, yeah may, I forgave yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they saw that I could uh, be in a debate again and uh, was back on track. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, I learned very much during this period. Yeah. I, and I can say some words about that. Yeah. If you uh, want, yeah, be, first of all, nice. I will say that as a human being, yeah. I learned about how delicate, tuned we are mm -hmm. as human beings. Mm -hmm. It is really a question of balance uh, between the physical and mental health. Mm. And uh, in my uh, case, the mental health really affected my physical health. Yeah. But I think on the other hand that it is easier to meet mental health problem if you are in a rather good physical health mm. shape. Yeah. 
So and, and we are very, this is a very important balance. Mm. Secondly, I will say that I learned to take uh, care of the good moments in life more mm -hmm. than before. Because before I never took the time to sit down and have a long meal with my family, a long Sunday breakfast. Now I enjoy it. So you, you, you a little bit changed li changed. life philosophy I after changed, this. Uh, yeah. the way of life yeah. uh, uh, to some extent. Mm. Uh, for instance, enjoying a long uh, meal with family or with friends. Mm. To listen to soft music. Before Earlier I only wanted to listen to hard music, hard rock. And <laughs> now it was so good and calming down with uh, soft music. And I still do. Yeah. Uh, to be out in the nature in, uh, is uh, more meaningful for me today. I can mm. look into the details on flowers, uh, on trees and yeah. so on. And for me, this is God's creation. And I really value it more than before. <laughs> so there are, uh, are uh, several <laughs> learnings out mm. of uh, such an experience uh, that I had. And I will say that when you have looked into them, mm deep down into the black sides of life, as I did, because mm -hmm. it was a serious depression in accordance yeah. to my doctor. When you looked into the black li uh, sides mm -hmm. of life, you can even more value the light, good sides mm -hmm. of life. So in a way, life has enlarged mm -hmm. for me. And I feel that I have been enriched by this. After this, yeah. yeah. And probably, probably then a uh, 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 very strong experience since you went so so much down. And and as often people who get a depressive reaction or have depression, their thoughts become very negative. They're hopeless mm -hmm. and and they they look uh, oh, yeah. very negatively on the future. Do you remember some thoughts or feelings which you had during the, that oh, yes. period? Was it like? I'm an awful, I'm an awful prime minister. I shouldn't have this, or I'm a bad husband, oh, yeah. bad friend. Or would you be willing to share some of these dominating thoughts, which you know now are not real, but they were oh, yes. dominating? Well, they were dominating. Yeah. As I said, everything was black, hmm. and I had taken my decision to step down as prime minister only after yeah. one yeah. year. Uh, but the, my minister of foreign affairs convinced me not to do. Hmm. So I got six and a half, uh, five and a half years more as yeah. prime minister. Mm -hmm. And that is also an important message. It's possible to come back in job, yeah. even as prime minister, yeah. after having depression, had yeah. a depression. Mm. I did. Yeah. After four weeks, that is maybe a normal, a limited time. But I came back and I was re-elected mm. at the next election yeah. in 2001. Yeah. That was That's also, amazing. That's, that was amazing yeah. and uh, very yeah. interesting. Mm. Um, I had also the very strange experience that I felt that I had no value yeah. as a human being. A worthless. Yeah, yeah it was mm. down to zero. No yeah. value yeah. as a human being. Mm. And I told my family, I'm sorry, I have no value. Mm -hmm. If you want to get rid of me, do. But then my wife and my children said, no, at least you have value for us. Mm -hmm. You mean so much to us. And that was, in a way, the beginning to be built up again. Yeah. But so deep was the depression, mm. so black was everything, that <laughs> thinking of that I have been member of parliament for, uh, yeah. at that time, 25 years. Mm -hmm. I had been minister of cabinet, I had been prime minister. And thinking of yourself that you have no value. Mm -hmm. But they really did. It's serious. Yeah. So, so, but of course, <laughs> they helped me to, mm -hmm. to start thinking again. Yeah, you have at least a value for us. It's, uh, so, and all mm. these letters I got yeah. uh, was another expression of that. Uh, so, uh, that reminds me also of the value of having family and friends around. Mm. It's so important because you really rely on them when you are in a crisis, mm. uh, as I was yeah. back in 98. Uh, so, taking care of your family, taking care of your friends, mm in my view, cannot be overestimated. Because one day you need them, mm -hmm. really need them. Yeah. And then they must be there yeah. around you. That's a very, very uh, touching story. And thank you very much for sharing sharing that. And 
looking back, don't you think? Don't you think it's it's incredible incredible how depression can be? Like how? Oh yes. It's I, like uh, uh, <laughs> for people who have had it, they 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 might associate, but like going going from from such a uh, from such extreme to to mm. to experiencing a feeling no value to yeah, seeing very, it later very, yeah. it's very very strange yeah. i will say <laughs> to, to to consider everything to be mm. hopeless yeah i couldn't uh, on before and imagine that that could happen yeah another feeling i had was that i was beside myself in a way mm-hmm. i was not myself but i was beside myself yeah. and i also had the feeling that up in my head there were like walls Mm. <laughs> walls around in my head yeah. and that my thoughts did not come out of these walls mm. they were only turning around between the walls yeah. all the time yeah so when it, it was a problem it was only turning around in my head mm. and i could never not solve it yeah. so that was also a very strange uh, feeling uh, so well i i i know from my psychiatrist analysis mm. that i um, maybe i have a more conditions for getting depressions that mm. most people have yeah so um uh, i also after 98 i have had periods uh, well, of um, but i will say smaller smaller depressions yeah but when i started to feel uh, sad very sad and some anxiety black thinking uh, that most things were black mm-hmm. but then i had the experience from 98 so yeah. i knew uh what to do <laughs> to take time mm. to calm down yeah. to talk to somebody about the problem yeah. so fortunately i have not been that down yeah. as i was in 19 mm. but That's i have been down yeah. and i have more ups and downs mm. that most people have yeah that's uh, very good that you that you share so so after this experience in 98 you you, you kind of built up a strategy or system when you realized that you might getting into that uh, into that spiral again mm. then you now no, I, know I more what to what yeah. to do i know more so i think i can avoid it mm. but i will have my ups and downs yeah. I, I know so mm. and i will also very much contribute to fight the stigma around yeah. mental health because yeah. that is still a problem mm. uh, and in in developing countries even more than in Norway. Yeah. so i've been to south africa mm. uh, speaking about this i've yeah. been to england I've been to Northern Ireland <laughs> uh, and uh, I've been to the United States several times mm. speaking out about this and I from time to time give interviews as <laughs> I do as I do now when uh, by a coincidence in my cabinet uh, after 98 mm. episode yeah. uh, we got um, we should um, discuss a, a white paper to the parliament mm-hmm. about how to build out the mental health care system in Norway mm-hmm. And I had my own uh, fresh experience on that, so yeah. I could really contribute. Yeah. And, and uh, as we know, uh, the mental health care system has not been that good as a physical health care system mm. because uh, it has not been prioritized, and especially uh, for young people. Mm. So I said we have to really make a plan yeah. for increasing the efforts, mm. both with regard to economy and with regard to educated uh, healthcare people mm. so we can be better prepared mm. for meeting uh, the needs of people who have mental health problems mm. and that it's much more people than we before mm. believed yeah so fortunately we we managed through some years after to build up the capacity in Norway mm. and we built down the very big institutions Uh, that we were used to know when we grew up Mm. and we decentralized uh, the mental health care system in smaller institutions in local societies Mm -hmm. and we integrated the mental health care in the mental health care system in Trenno so we should not discriminate between the mental health care system and the physical health care Mm. system it should be equal and creating more more access equal access to 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 Mm. And I have, uh, as I said, encouraged all people to yeah. talk about it with somebody if you have a mental health problem. Because if you break a leg mm. on your body, yeah. uh, everybody will see it. Uh, and 
and uh, you can talk about it. It happened when I made cross country skiing or in my bathroom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that's okay to talk about. But if you break a leg inside your body, mm -hmm. which uh, a mental health uh, break is about, mm -hmm. then it's also mysterious yeah. and not talking about it. We must get rid of that stigma. Mm -hmm. yeah. It should be as obvious to talk about mental health mm -hmm. uh, as it is about physical health. Mm -hmm. That is another main message from myself. Yeah. We totally agree with you, and and uh, we're very happy that you uh, that you have this have this belief. Uh, and uh, just a si side question, uh, like, but but since we're on the topic, like mental health in in the Western world in, in Europe, there's no other health problem which costs society so much. So this is like, so wh what do you think needs to happen? Um, needs to happen so 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 we can give it the proper attention the attention well, uh, we, we must talk about it talk about like we're doing now more yeah. more of this talk more of this yeah uh, in all media mm. and traditional media and the social yeah. media yeah uh, to fight down the stigma and talk to the politicians especially mm. yeah uh, i will say that it has uh, improved in norway over yeah. the last years mm. uh, has been discussions in the parliament about this. Yeah. It has been approved, as I said, plans for increasing the mental health care uh, system. Mm. It has been better. It is better now than yeah. uh, it was uh, when I had my uh, very deep depression uh, 23 years ago, I will say. But still, it's a way to go. Mm. And yeah. fortunately, in Norway, also some other uh, um, uh, well-known people mm. uh, have uh, talked about it, mm. so I'm not the only. No, but mm. I was the first in that position as being prime minister. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, we we t we totally totally agree with you on this point, and and uh, and and as we were a little bit talking about before we started the camera, the uh, the early intervention part, how important it is for people mm. to get help when they need uh, and not waiting um, and. And getting the right help mm. that is of course difficult but but that is uh, very important yeah because maybe some have that misunderstanding that if you talk about your mental health problem you are a weak person mm. but it's opposite yeah if you talk about it you are a strong person <laughs> yeah. and you will become even stronger mm -hmm. So, so that is also uh, so yeah. important to, to to realize. So, yeah. some I, wrong assumptions with often yeah, people many, have uh, yeah. many wrong yeah. assumptions about yeah. this, uh, no doubt. So, yeah. well, I, I think I'm a rather strong person, mm. but uh, I also know what it is to to get a breakdown. Yeah, uh, and uh, I came back in job. Other people came back in job, and this is also an important message to employers mm. because I think there are also there wrong assumptions among mm. many of them. Yeah. Because I think, okay, if my um, employee has been out of job for some weeks because of a heart attack, for instance, okay, I can take him back, no problem. Mm. But he have, if he has been out of job because of mental health mm. breakdown, mm, I'm not sure I can take him back. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah. They should be treated equally. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. And, and I think often a misconception is that even though people have had or have mental health problem, then then it's much better to be at work, to meeting your colleagues, oh, yes. be working. You may maybe or should get a little bit different tasks or some understanding that you're not at the top level for some time, but but showing up to work, meeting meeting uh, your colleagues, contributing. That is very important Absolutely. in the recovery. If you are able to. If you are able. Not yeah. too early, mm. because maybe you need some yeah. time yeah. where you really recover. Mm. But uh, I, I think you are right. Come back uh, yeah. as soon as possible. And I came back as soon as possible after three yeah. and a half weeks. Yeah. Uh, and maybe I was not 100% mm. recovered at that time. No. But let me say 90%. But I was able to do my job. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, As with people with flu, they might have been yeah. not be hundred percent, but they are ninety five percent. But they still yeah. manage to do their That's job. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's similar. So very, very good. Uh, we're very happy that you uh, uh, wanted to talk to us, and and I think that that you are sharing your story is gonna inspire 
many other people to do the same. Mm. And, and we thank you again for, for spending time with us. Thank you for inviting me uh, for this conversation. Perfect. Thank you.